It's that time again. This is Katni with your weekly Python on Hardware news. Every week, we put together the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. It is available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters, or tune in each week to hear what's going on. Adafruit is working with the team to safely remain open as we continue to navigate COVID-19. For more information, visit adafruit.com slash open safely. Adafruit is stocked and all orders are shipping. Expect possible delays as we continue to ramp up. Now is the best time to get orders in for your favorite products, including items for students. To find the latest Adafruit products and all of the essentials you love, visit adafruit.com. CircuitPython Day is in one week. September 9th, 2020, or 9-9-2020, is the snakiest day of this year, so it's been designated CircuitPython Day. There are many events planned, including CircuitPython live streams highlighting all things Python and Python on hardware. You can see the latest developing schedule and add your event via a pull request at adafru.it slash cpdayschedule. The same day is also DIA CircuitPython. CircuitPython fans in Central America are planning additional activities. They write, Costa Rican artist Isabel Utag was commissioned to create a mascot for this event, taking into account our roots and culture as Central Americans. You may already know Blinka, the snake mascot Adafruit has chosen for CircuitPython. With his talent, he has created one we are sure will be loved by all. I present to you Quetzal Blinka. See their website in Spanish for their planned activities, diacircuitpython.org. This year, CircuitPython Day is being dedicated to Lambda Labs Makerspace, who are helping with the Beirut disaster. The Born Hack Hacker Camp still happened this year, and they once again provided an electronic badge to all attendees, the 2020 Born Hack Badge. They write, Similar to the last couple years, this badge has an ARM Cortex-M0 as the main controller, but on this badge, it's the SAMD21 from Microchip, with four times as much flash and RAM compared to the chips from previous badges. This makes it possible to run Adafruit CircuitPython, which lowers the bar for how easy it is to get started hacking on the badge. Details available on hackaday.io. Code and video available from BornHack on GitHub and YouTube, respectively. Joey Castillo posts a Twitter thread about his development of the Tiny Book Touch, a small e-paper reader with screen touch sensing. In bringing it up, he wrote a demo in CircuitPython with the Adafruit Focal Touch library, and he says it just works. This device includes Stemma ports, GPIO, and I2C. He also posts, So I'm realizing I need to redesign this as a featherboard, either SAMD51J or ESP32-S2. Imagine using this with a LoRa wing for radio stuff or controlling a power relay. So many options. And if I can keep it simple, maybe this is a gadget I could look into having manufactured. Details available from Jose Castillo on Twitter. In this week's CircuitPython Deep Dive livestream, Scott streamed his work on adding the new ESP32-S2 board to CircuitPython. Check out the latest video and past videos at adafru.it slash deepdive. Scott will be presenting a special deep dive live on CircuitPython Day from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time. PyCon AU is happening online this week from September 4th through 6th. Details available at 2020.pycon.org.au and from PyCon AU on Twitter. As a preview, Rowena Stewart made a pentatonic python with CircuitPython in the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. If you'd like to find out how to make your own, see her PyCon AU talk on September 5th. Sneak peek available from Golden Fennec on Twitter. David Gloud posts to Twitter a BMP280 barometric pressure sensor placed in an inflated balloon. The color indicates the pressure level. Green is low, red is high. Inside the balloon is a Feather NRF52840 sense. Code is available from dgloud on GitHub. The Getting Started with CircuitPython on Compatible Microcontroller Boards guide is now available to help people get up and running with CircuitPython from Woolsey Workshop. Details available from John W. Woolsey on Twitter. The Microbit Remote Learning Course provides video learning about the Microbit and MicroPython. GardenPy, powered by Neptune.py, is designed to manage, monitor, and control a series of sprinkler valves and a multitude of sensors for pretty much any sized irrigation, hydroponic, or aquaponic project. It can be scaled from 1 to 32 zones for water and 7 zones for power. It is built almost entirely in Python 3 for the Raspberry Pi 4. Code available from RJ Sears on GitHub. Read about the top 7 programming languages to learn before the end of the 2020s on HackerNoon.com. Anime to Clothing is a PyTorch official implementation of Anime to Real Clothing, cosplay costume generation via image to image translation. Code available from tan 5 on GitHub. Python Poplar is a Python binding to the Poplar CPP library. It allows one to read, render, or modify PDF documents. Code available from CBrunet on GitHub. 
Watch the Chicago Python lunch break for August 2020. Video available from Chicago Python Users Group on YouTube and more information available from Chicago Python on Twitter. On PyT episode 11, Nina Zakarenko and special guest Tanya Allard discuss scientific computing in Python, mechanical keyboards, and dev advocacy. Video available at twitch.tv slash nnjaio. Rich is a Python library for writing rich text with color and style to the terminal and for displaying advanced content such as tables, markdown, and syntax highlighted code. Full post available as part of Tuesday tooling on bigl.es. Pippi is a library of computer music modules for Python. It includes a few handy data structures for music like sound buffer and wavetable, which are operator overloaded to make working with sounds and control structures simpler. It also includes a lot of useful methods for doing common and not so common transformations to sounds and control structures. Code is available from Love Sound on GitHub. Practical Natural Language Processing, a comprehensive guide to building real world NLP systems, available from Practical NLP on GitHub. There is a high demand for Python-driven machine language tools to boost robot farming. Read more at fintechdemand.com. An interactive HTML bill of materials plugin for KiCad available from OpenScope projects on GitHub. MicroRuby, run Ruby code on an embedded microcontroller. Details available at microruby.com. The number of CircuitPython supported microcontrollers and single board computers continues to grow. There were three new boards added this week, including the Micro S2, the ESP32 S2 Kaluga Dev Kit, and the Ikigai Sense Vita. Are you interested in adding a new board to CircuitPython? Check out the Adafruit Learn system for a series of guides about getting your board added to CircuitPython and CircuitPython.org. There are two new Python and hardware related guides in the Adafruit Learn system this week, including this project displays the current value of Bitcoin in one of three currencies, US dollars, euros, or GBP, and displays it on a large, stylish RGB LED matrix display all made in CircuitPython running the Metro M4 airlift accessing Coindesk API wirelessly. Keep up to date on the current Bitcoin price index with this large matrix display in this guide from John Park. Use NeoPixels in a Gemma M0 to create a faux yet realistic looking torch. Hidden inside the torch is a mini fan and silk fabric. Use CircuitPython to easily program the Gemma M0 and NeoPixels. Build a 3D printed prop with a realistic looking flame in this guide from Noe and Pedro. The current number of CircuitPython libraries is 267. This includes both the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries and the CircuitPython community libraries. There was one new library this week, Adafruit CircuitPython TC74, and a significant number of updated libraries. As always, visit circuitpython.org libraries to download the latest Adafruit CircuitPython bundle. Included in this week's updates from the CircuitPython team, Dan finished debugging HCI underscore BLEIO and submitted a PR. He had to use a salier and add code to output extra data on a spare pin to see what was going on internally. Scott has reviewed the PR and he's now making a few fixes. The PR should be merged within a few days. The next CircuitPython 6.0.0 alpha release, 6.0.0 alpha 3, is nearly ready and by now it should be out. The release after that we hope will include both HCI underscore BLEIO and also Scott's Wi-Fi support for the ESP32-S2, so watch for that soon. Dan's been trying to automate or at least facilitate the data gathering we do to prepare the release notes for each CircuitPython release. Right now it's pretty much done by hand. To this end, he's been trying out the GraphQL interface to GitHub, which facilitates some but not all of the queries he wants to do. Jeff's in new project time, which means a new rat's nest of wires on his desk. We're starting on CAN bus support in CircuitPython. The first hardware we'll add to it is the SAM E54 explained board, because the E54 microcontroller has a built-in CAN peripheral. However, Jeff's testing network here consists of two STM32F405 feathers running MicroPython, which has its own implementation of CAN. CAN is interesting because it is used inside of automobiles, but can also be used as a small network between microcontrollers. If you have any uses for CAN bus, let us know on Discord in the CircuitPython channel so we can keep them in mind as we create this API. Lucian has been working on fixing a variety of bugs across multiple ports. He started out with a bug that was crashing the meow bit at startup and turned out to be multiple issues related to low power, display IO changes, and pulse IO pointer problems. 
He also revisited some older issues on the STM32, which were simply out of date, having been fixed a long time ago by wider scale improvements to the port. He has been spending time on a variety of problems with the ESP32 S2 and STM32, including fixing the TRNG module across both ports, debugging a crash related to display I.O. on ESP32, dealing with problems related to make file comment style, and logging some potential issues with the file system. It's somewhat scattered work, but it's good to make sure that major bugs don't linger in the issues list for too long, and he's found often that investigating an issue in one port turns up undocumented problems in others. In his time off, this past week he finished a breakout feather wing for the Dynamixel AX12 servo motor to go with his library. He's been meaning to get back into making his own hardware, and it seems like the assembly options for PCBs have gotten a lot cheaper recently, which really lowers the barrier to entry for his projects. He's excited to see how these ones turn out when they arrive next week. Pi Gotham is a New York City-based eclectic Pi-centric conference covering many topics. Pi Gotham TV is taking place October 2nd and 3rd, 2020, with a single track of talks presented online. Visit 2020.pygotham.tv for more information. PyCon India 2020 will be held online from October 3rd through 5th, 2020. Visit in.pycon.org 2020 for details regarding the conference. The Hackaday Remoticon will take place everywhere November 6th through 8th, 2020. It is weekend packed with workshops about hardware creation held virtually for all to enjoy. Call for proposals is now open. Details available on hackaday.com. Translating CircuitPython is now easier than ever. Translations make the project more accessible to a broader range of folks. Adding or improving translations is a great way to get started contributing to the project. With the help of fellow open source project WebLate, we're making it even easier. You can create a new account just for WebLate or sign in using other sites like GitHub or Google. If you write another language, visit adafru.it slash translate cp, sign in, and start translating. Looking for more Python on hardware all week? Join the Adafruit community on Discord and check out the Help with CircuitPython and CircuitPython channels. We're over 24,000 strong and continuing to grow. You'll find a supportive, positive community filled with like-minded folks. Join at adafru.it slash discord. And that is your Python on hardware news for this week. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter or tune in again next week.